Hello everyone, this is Iggy from Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. I'm in the cowboy kitchen once again, and today I'm going to bring you the German Marx accessories that were uh, introduced in 1963. Okay, this is my Sears catalog collection. I'm going to show you the cover. You can get this from Classic Toy Soldiers. And every once in a while you can actually get it on sale. Uh, 1951 to 1969. And it's produced by Classic Toy Soldiers. And what they did is they took out pages from each Christmas book for every year between those years. And presented the boys' toys. Now... I've been told and have read that they inter Marx introduced German accessories in 1963. However, when I searched through the catalog, I was unable to find anything until I reached 1964 Christmas catalog. And this is the first place that, that features a picture of all the German accessories. What you have here is the German tanks, armored car, um, 88, and I'm, I don't know if the motorcycle and side, oh, here it is, motorcycle and sidecar. Okay, so let's take a look at each of those individually. The first up, I've showed this to you before, is the German 88. And you can see this is a pretty nifty little toy that they added uh, to the, the play sets. Now the originals had a spring here in the front. You'd pull back and it would fire a, a shell. But uh, those spring-loaded toys were all eliminated uh, sometime in the late 60s with the uh, when Congress passed an act saying that... Uh, I can't remember the exact name of the Child Safety Act or something like that, where uh, toy manufacturers had to make their toys more safe. I guess a lot of kids were choking on artillery. Um, now, last time when I showed you the 88, uh, I showed you a picture, a, a picture of a real one in its anti-aircraft role. And uh, many of these were used by the Germans as artillery support and, more importantly, as an anti-tank gun. And when they had a kill they would paint a white stripe on the barrel of the anti-tank gun. So let's take a look at the 88 in its anti-tank roll. And you can, you can see here, this is in uh, North Africa. That shows them unloading ammunition. And there it is. And you can see right here the stripes that they would paint on the gun for each kill. And here's one emplaced. It was also called the uh, Flak 18 um, gun, as uh, but more commonly by, by us anyway as the 88 or 8.8 .8 centimeter. Okay, next up, we're going to take a look at the motorcycle and sidecar. I got this from Classic Toy Soldiers. Now, originally, this came in a darker plastic. I don't know if you can see it there, but I painted it this light gray color to match my uh, other Marx Toy, Sol Toy Soldier Germans. So here's the Marx version of... The German motorcycle with sidecar. Okay. Let's see if I can turn this once more. Give you this side of it. All right. So what I like to do is show you that and then show you the, um, the real deal. So let's put this book away. And show you this over here. 
Now here's an example of two German um, motorcycles with sidecar. And the first thing you'll notice is that they have a tire on the back of the sidecar. They have these uh, box metal box containers. And this is the BMW, and this one's the Zundap. But if you know, kind of ironically, this looks extraordinarily like this, which is a British motorcycle with sidecar. Now, I don't know uh, who manufactured this motorcycle. I don't know if BSA was around back then. I'm not sure who would it be. But I thought it was funny that the British one looks more like this than the German one does. But uh, these toys were not meant to be authentic recreations. They were more to give an impression uh, than to be accurate reproductions. I can smell smoke. That means my lamp is starting to burn again. When I first plugged it in, it started on fire, so... I probably should have returned it. Anyway, if you don't hear from me again, it's because the place burned down. Okay, so that's the motorcycle. So let's move to the next item. Move this out of the way. And that is what Marx has here as the armored car. Now, this one was a real tough one. The Germans never had an armored car that looked like this. Uh, you can see it's uh, a six-wheeled vehicle. The Germans did have six-wheeled vehicles, but this thing looks more like an American half-track almost. This thing that looks like a chain garland, uh, that's probably supposed to be a tow cable. Uh, however, they, <laughs> it kind of looks like a Christmas garland. Uh, you see the Baltic Cross there, up here. Now, when the uh, Germans invaded uh, Poland and um, Norway, Denmark, their vehicles had very large white crosses painted on them, uh, tactical symbols for identification. I think they might have had it in the invasion of France, too, but I wasn't able to find my Blitzkrieg book. It's in storage someplace. Anyway, I looked through uh, my book on armored cars, and the closest thing I could find was this right here. It's a six-wheeled vehicle. It's the SDKFC 247. Um, I'm guessing, though, that this was a rather obscure vehicle and was more of a prototype uh, here we have it on parade in the pre-war years. Again, here over here it's on parade. It shows three men holding the one of their standards on parade. But you can see even here, there's quite a difference between the two. So, but this was the closest I could get, and I think when Marx was doing these things, they weren't trying to uh, make an exact copy of something, but more to give it an impression. It's kind of like that TV show, The Rat Patrol, um, in the 1960s, where they would use uh, American tanks from the Spanish army, uh, painted uh, tan with uh, Baltic crosses all over them. All right, so that's the half-track. And lastly is the tank. And we'll take a look at that. Now I'm guessing that this is supposed to be a panther. However, you can see right away there's problems with that too. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Oh, look at button. Beep, beep. Okay, so they have road wheels up here. Uh, you would not put road wheels up there because that was your the these are grills that are give armored grills that give you access to your motor, and when you're refueling, you would have to open 
these up and put the fuel hose into the engine that from up here and uh, to keep these from falling off they would probably have to weld them on there so that's fantasy right there uh, this number 351 the Germans had a system where they would identify the um, vehicle by the company number the platoon number and the number of the tank uh, Americans did something similar. When I was in the Army, we did it by the the letter A. I was in Alpha Company, and I was on the uh, 50 tank, which was a special purpose tank. It, it had a blade. Uh, the reason I was assigned to that tank is nobody wanted it, and they would put all the, the uh, soldiers they thought were losers onto that tank and that's where I ended up uh, we actually took that crappy tank down line and qualified it which I'm told was uh, quite a unique uh, achievement considering that the crew was all misfits um, they were kind of embarrassed uh, when we actually performed that well anyway uh, so that would be the um, company platoon and tank now the reason they do that is so a tank commander or a company commander could identify uh the different tanks in his company now the gun on a uh, panther tank was a 75 and this thing looks huge in comparison to the turret in fact the only gun i could find that was even remotely similar to that was a Soviet 120 millimeter gun. Let me see if I can find the example of that. It was on a, oh, here it is. It was on a tank destroyer. So I should have marked the pages. You know, I'm pretty uh, random sometimes. And here we go, right there. Now, I don't think Mark's purposely designed the gun to look like this. This is the SU-152. It has a, I believe, a gun that's twice the size of the, almost twice the size of the 75. And here we, let's compare the two. So there's the Marks Panther, which is supposedly a 75. And there's the, the SU-152 which is a 120 millimeter gun, which is pretty sizable. This would have been able to penetrate any uh, German tank without any trouble. In fact, when they, the Russians first introduced this tank, it was at the Battle of Kursk, and it destroyed 12 Tigers and 7 Ferdinands. Ferdinands are the, uh, they're a strange looking vehicle, not, um, the elephant, but the, I can't remember, self-propelled gun. Okay, so in in uh, conclusion, we took a look at the Marx Panther, the Marx armored car, the Marx motorcycle with sidecar, and the Marx 88. And that's all I have for you on this video. Uh, if you like what I do, uh, please subscribe. I have a, I think I have 12 subscribers. I remember when I looked up uh, Bella's toy chest, she had 17 subscribers when I subscribed, and she now has 27,000. And Laura Legends. Uh, she's like she's got like 162,000 subscribers, but they both have uh, something I don't have, uh, which is uh, they're good looking chicks. So anyway, if you want me to, I'll take my top off. Uh, Laura, uh, not Laura, but uh, Bella practically does that in all her videos. Um, you should look that up. Uh, well, never mind.